James beginning uh, 5 and 13. I want to read this morning. First of all, as I begin this, I want to just say a couple of things. Because this is really, this has really been a, a week as I've, I've had this on my mind. And it's, it's, it's been some things that I've dealt, had to deal with. And not too much, you know, external things. But a lot of times things we just have to deal with in our mind. You know the the attacks that come upon us in our mind, and you, we're not we're not immune to it. We're not immune to the things that come and want to weigh us down at times. But we have instruction, and we know that we're not to, you know, be burdened down with these things and, and cause it, you know, to to let it come in and cause damage and um, discouragement. Things that just sometimes we deal with on a day-by-day -day basis. You know, it's just, it's part of our walk. It's part of our, our journey of faith. But I feel very, very unqualified this morning to speak with you on some of the things we're going to be speaking about. But I've, I've come to see it this way, that I'm only unqualified as it regards my own self my own efforts, my own experiences even, because we have the Word of God, and we have the, this, we hold this Word of truth that has been given, and, it, and to this body, I just want to say this, that this body has been given the Word of truth. In a measure that Many in the body of Christ has it has not been given. Now I believe that. I believe that this body has been given the word of truth, the word of the the pure, unadulterated truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. To know that what the Lord has already done, that it has been one hundred percent. Paid in full. And I, I can't really make it no more simpler than that. Because there are so many places that don't have that. They don't have that, that knowledge that has it, not to say the Lord has, doesn't want them to have it. Maybe it has been presented at times and they either reject it or they just chose not to believe it. And kept going with what they were used to doing. But I, I do believe that here in this place, that we have this and we have an awesome responsibility that we, as we are, have been made partakers of it, Amen. that, that we, we understand it, we, we walk in it, we share it, we live it, we flow in it. And the freedom that comes is, is you know, it's, it's just, it's amazing to me at times the things that we can we can think that we know something but until we, we get it by the spirit of God and a revelation into our hearts and that it, it's not just something that we've learned, it's just not something that through our head knowledge that we have acquired but when the spirit of God speaks it and he makes it real into our inner man, into the heart of who we are, then we have that awesome responsibility then to carry it to be that vessel that God just wants to use and we'll talk a little bit more about that as the message continues but of being that vessel that God can use but let's look at verse 13 and I'm going to read this and it speaks very very straight very plain and to the point it says is any is any among you afflicted? He said, he asked this question, is any among you afflicted? I want us to, to understand what this word means. You know, we read here in verse 10, a couple of three Sundays ago, when we studied about, he says, take my brethren the prophets. 
who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction. So when he asked the question, is any among you afflicted? Now, for the, for the child of God that truly is, has their heart, their heart's desire, and their mind is made up, that they're going to walk this walk, they're going to live this life, they're going to live this, this, this glorious example of being a servant of, of the Lord, we're going to be afflicted. I said, we're going to be afflicted. It's not if we're afflicted, but it's when those afflictions come. Because that is the onslaught of the enemy, is to afflict the servant of the Lord to get him or her off their course, out of their, their designed place, that God has designed for them to operate in. Because we have this by design. God has given this to his church by design. And it, that's right, brother. It's, it's not just by happenstance or coincidence. This, this is designed by God Almighty. And we we have this, this walk that you and I, each, each and every one of us have our walk. And it's up to each and every one of us how we walk our walk. That we have that responsibility within ourselves to walk this walk. So he, he asked this question, is any among you afflicted? And the prescription that he gives, he says, let him pray. I want that to sink in just for a minute. The prescription that God the Holy Spirit gives for the believer, he says, let him pray. Is any among you afflicted? And again, he says, let him pray. Now, with everything that's going on today in the life of the ordinary child of God here in this country, we don't have to look too hard or search too, you know, too wide to find an affliction. There's, there's, there's afflictions there. There's things that come and afflict us to cause us to, to veer off course, to be discouraged, to say, what's the use? I quit. Say, I'm not going to do this anymore. Mm. You know, and, and, and if we're not careful, we'll, we'll find ourselves saying these things. We'll say, I, I'm just... And God forbid that we would even get to the place that says, well, this just ain't worth it anymore. That's exactly what the enemy wants you to do. That's exactly what our adversary, the devil, wants to get you into thinking. And you'll find you don't have to look hard to find people that entice you into that, to entice you into the, the grumbling. The complaining, the murmuring, the, you know, getting the idea that I'm, I'm just better than that. I'm, I'm just too good to be enduring this, this pain that I'm going through. What, I, what did I do to deserve this? You know, we, we get in a mentality sometimes and we're, we're not careful. We say, well, I deserve better than this. What about me? I never asked for this. And I'm just basically talking about disappointments in life. That things don't always turn out the way that we want them to. They don't, we don't always turn out what we thought it was going to turn out to be. But I'm telling you what, as a child of God, we can be encouraged today to know this. And as we continue to put our faith we continue to believe as we continue to do what is right as we continue he says that we will reap we will as we continue to sow the goodness of God we will reap the scripture says if we faint not 
So don't stop, my brother. Don't stop, my sister. Don't, don't get to the place where we just coast, where we just sit back and just say, okay, I'm on. I'm on this. I'm just going to stop. I'm going to hold up. I'm going to wait. And that, that, that's not what God wants us to do. He wants us to continue to go forward, to continue to press on, to continue to believe and understand that we have an awesome, and I say this again, responsibility and a, a place that each and every person here within the sound of my voice and those that might hear this at a later date or even now, that we have this, this place that God has us in. And it's not about us trying to make something happen, but it's just about saying, Lord, here I am, I'm available. I'm available to you. I make myself available to you. Have your way within me. Do what you want to do in my life. Be truly the Lord of all that I have. The Lord of, of my life. And that's, everybody's don't have the same situation. I understand that. People, people have different things that they deal with from day to day and things that they do. I understand that. But don't limit God and say, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm bound to this job X amount of hours a week and there's just so much I can do. Or we may have physical uh, disabilities. It says, well, I, I can't go and do this or I can't do that. We may have, we can, if we're not careful, we'll focus on the things, the reasons why we can't do something. Instead of just focus on the one that says, I can do all things through Christ, he says, who strengthens me. And it's through him. It's through the knowledge of him. It's through what he has called for us to do. He, so he says, if any is afflicted among you, he says, let me pray. And I want us to, and this is something that has been wasn't, wasn't raised in a Pentecostal environment. The, knew nothing about the Holy Spirit. Knew nothing about gifts of the Spirit. Just didn't know anything about it. Wasn't taught against it, but just wasn't taught anything about it. But I, I know the Holy Spirit is real. I believe I've received, and now we have to believe the things that we know. You know, it's, it's me and a guy I was talking to here the other day, he says, as the Lord has shared with him, he says, you know what you believe, but now it's time to believe what you know. To believe what you know. To believe in the Holy Spirit. To believe in his power. To believe in his work that he's working within us. Because it's, it's not about, I just want to, boy, I'll tell you what, I, I got to say this. It's not just about waiting until we gather. It's not just about waiting until a, a particular day that we gather here together. But the Holy Spirit is for every day. It is for he. Let me let me let me say he is for every day, not he. He's for us every single moment of our life. Everything we go through, he's there. And I'm gonna tell you what. And it's been said here here very recently through this book that to pray in the spirit, to pray with. You know, you don't know what to pray for. You don't have an understanding of how to pray, but to allow the Spirit of God to pray through you, to pray in an unknown tongue, is carries so much value to a child of God that it is unreal. But you know what? You can't do that effectively and be worried about anything. You, you can't be worried about 
is this going to work or not? And then you can't enter this and say, oh, I'm going to try this. It's kind of like, oh, I'm going to try to breathe. You, you depend on, you know, the air. You depend on your breath. This is essential. It's essential, church. We, we need to participate in it. And it says, well, I'm already participating. Well, good. Let's, let's keep participating. And let's, let's begin to tell people the importance of it. Because the Holy Spirit is God. Amen. And God can do more in anybody's situation than we ever dreamed possible. Just little things sometimes. And I will share this with you very quickly. But yesterday I had an experience. Wasn't even thinking about it. Wasn't even on my mind to do it. But my son had purchased a very expensive lawnmower. But he got it for just pennies on the dollar. Because they didn't know what was wrong with it. And hadn't really spent no time working on it. I helped, helped him do a couple of things on it. And he's tried to use it. It just wouldn't work. And the end result was it was going to need a complete engine replacement. And I was just minding my own business yesterday. And the Holy Spirit just said, he just pushed me toward that lawnmower. So I went over and just kind of sit down and looked at it, sit on it. Hey, it's got a good seat on it. I'm talking about one of those nice zero turn mowers, you know. And I know y'all, some of you have had one, and that's great. <clears throat> I haven't bought one yet. So I've still, I've still got the old type, the old tractor type. And that, and I like those kind of mowers. Yep. But this thing was made to cut grass. I'm talking about, they, you know, y'all know they will cut some grass. So I got all sitting on it, checking it out. I said, well, I'm going through the crank. So I, you know, cranked it. It was doing it like it was before. It wouldn't run, wouldn't do nothing. It was, and it's just like it came to me. The Holy Spirit told me what to do to fix it. I, I'm telling you the truth. So I done the simple thing to determine the problem. Because you know what? I believe the Holy Spirit knows what he's talking about. Amen. I believe God knows. And first of all, I want to say this. We don't control the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's right. When he decides to share something with us, to move upon us, to put us in a direction, to put us in a place, it's for a purpose. So I, I just simply done what I was inclined to do, and the end result, I mowed my yard with it yesterday. So Aaron, he was out, and he, he came in, and he's looking at me. He, he walks on by, and then he comes back through. He, says, he looks at me again and says, you're working on my mower. <laughs> I said, yeah, I worked on it a little bit. He said, well, I seen the yard was mowed. What'd you do? So I told him, I said, well, I'll tell you what. The Holy Spirit fixed your mower. It was God, the Holy Spirit, that gave me the idea of what to do. And it was something as simple. Can I just share this with you? As a spark plugs. <laughs> it would run, it would run, dry, but when you engage the blades, it would go dead every time. And I'm, I'm wasting all my time this morning, but I want to glorify God in this. Amen. It's, it's about when he gives us an instruction, no matter how simple, just obey it. Amen. Just do it. And that's just one small example. But I believe it is a result of spending more time praying in the Spirit. You know, entering, when we do pray, we always pray. And we, we, we give thanks unto God. We thank Him. We worship Him. We, we exalt Him. And then it may just be time to pray in tongues for a while. And just worship Him. And just let the Spirit of God flow through us. So the next part of this verse is, is there any merit 
He says, let him sing songs. Brother Mark, can I say something real quick? Yes. In the 8th chapter of the book of Romans, he talks about groaning in the spirit. You know, he talks about him helping us yes. you know, with our infirmities. We know not what to pray for as we ought. But because a lot of times if we're going through affliction of suffering, we're going to be praying to get out of it. That's right. And if we pray in the Holy Spirit, he, he may not pray for you to get out of it. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that uh, in the book of James that we're to be patient in trials and tribulations. You know, that, that we might that patience might be perfected in us. You know, that we might be perfect, or the word tell us yes. there means made complete, because a lot, God's not going to deliver us out of things. That's right. He's going to bring us. I'm not saying He's never going to. Yes. But he, most of the time, God's going to bring us through it because He's working something in us. Absolutely. Not necessarily for us, you know, and it's for our good and our eternal. Because God looks at the eternal, yes. not at the temporal. Yes. Of things. And we would have a tendency to want out. That's right. You know <laughs> in a hurry. Quick fast in a hurry. Because we're we don't like to suffer. We don't like to suffer. We don't like to endure. We don't like to go through something that is contrary to what we want. That makes us uncomfortable. But one thing that I believe that helps. It helps us, it, it keeps us in the right mindset as if, as if we keep our hearts and minds focused on Him and everything He's done for us. Keeping the cross in our view to remember the value of it, of what it's paid for, because man lost so much. Yes. Man lost so much at the fall that, that we only have the first fruits, the first fruits of the Spirit. But boy, how amazing those first fruits are. Yes. How wonderful they are. And you know that's a song that just keeps coming and keeps coming and keeps coming. Is that there's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. Wonder working power. Wonder working power. That's, that's not just an initial salvation, the initial you know, time whenever we came to Christ, how glorious and wonderful and exciting and amazing that that is, and we can talk about it forever, but it's a continual wonder-working power. Continually working. Continually showing wonders. But where is it at? In the blood. It's only found in the blood. So that's why the saints of the Old Testament, they knew about the blood. They had to put their trust in that blood, that blood sacrifice. That's why it worked for them. Hello? That's why it should work for us today because we look back to the one that came and shed his blood once and for all. 1 John 1 7 says that it cleanses from all sin. It's, it, as we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. It's, it's, it's cleansing. It's, it's wondrous. It's to be exalted and upheld above every other thing that we would ever think of. The blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm so glad that I'm a part of a church that exalts the blood. That proclaims the blood. That believes in the wonder-working power of the blood of Jesus. We want to praise him this morning because he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. It's the blood of Jesus. And we, we cling to that. We, we, we hold on to that. I'm going to tell y'all something kind of gross. Y'all bear with me. God blessed me in so many ways. Continually, he's, he's blessing. But a certain individual, he used a certain individual to give me some fresh caught catfish. Opelousa catfish. Y'all may not understand them. I don't know them. And, and they won't get to it. They said, hey, you want these fish? They got to be clean. I said, yeah, I want them. So I cleaned catfish yesterday. And some of these were, 
know, pretty good sized fish. You got enough to share? <laughs> I ain't sad enough to cook them yet, but I'll make sure. I ain't cooked them yet. But hey, I had to find my catfish skinners. I hadn't used them in so long. Finally found them. Thank God. So I get to skinning these catfish. I ain't skinned catfish in a long time. I forgot how hard it was to skin them big catfish. I should have hung one of them up. They was pretty tough. Pull them, snatch them. But you know, when you get down to it and you and you begin to dress that fish and the, the gore that's there, the blood, that is, it's just part of it. Every time I do, every time, I know Brother Roger, he's, he's very familiar with this, has come from a background of slaughterhouse and everything, and the blood and everything that's involved there. I can't help but think about it. About that blood that was, had to be shed. Not that there was nothing in that fish other than I was looking forward to when I do get it cooked. But that blood has to be shed. That there is no remission of, of sin without the shedding of blood. And that's, that's I'm just, I just want to focus on that just for a, a few more seconds. The wonder working power in the blood. It couldn't life could not be released while it was still in the body. That's right. In order for life to be given, he had to shed his blood. And that blood, Jesus is on the throne, but his blood is on the altar. Amen. It's separate. It, it was a price paid. It can't be taken out. Absolutely. Back. It has to stay there. Yes. That's what's amazing. Yes. Because it is it was paid once and for all. That's right. Eternal. Eternal price it was paid. <laughs> And in church, we, we so many times, if we're not careful, we will, we will do just stuff. We'll just let stuff sometimes come in and cloud that from our vision. That we've got to stay on, it's got to keep that fresh in our hearts and minds, the blood. It's the blood. The blood of Jesus. So is there any area, brother? He says, they can sing songs. I'm going to tell you what. As the Spirit of God begins to flow, as he begins to move, I'm talking about throughout the week. You may be in the house. You may be washing dishes. Let the, let the Spirit of God flow. You may be iron. My wife said that's the worst thing in the world for her is to iron. If it was left up to me, there wouldn't be nothing to iron. That's right. But she'll iron some, but she hates it, she says. So if you find yourself doing something you just can't stand, just begin to praise the Lord. A little make you feel so much better. I mean, the Spirit of God will get to move, get to flow, and you ain't got to get, you know, you, you can do it just right there to yourself. But if, you, if you'll find yourself getting louder, the happier you get, the merrier you get. Let's go on to verse, next verse, verse 14. Is there is any sick among you? Now, this, this is talking about a difference, a difference in need here. It's a different need now that he's, Addressing not just an affliction, but he says, Is any sick among you? And, and I have a feeling I'm not going to be able to cover all this the way it needs to, but I'm going to enter into it. Because the same God, he has the same action. Go ahead. The thing about it is, we can't anoint people with affliction. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It gives the remedy to pray. Yes. You know, and, and most people want to call other people. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So they, instead of when they're going through afflictions and suffering, they want somebody else to pray. To do the praying. That's right. You know, people are guilty of that, but you know, we don't anoint people with affliction. Exactly. With oil. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. So there, like you said, there's a difference between affliction and sickness yes. and disease. So we treat that differently. That's right. You know. But if we're not careful, we'll 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 say we'll think it means the same thing. You know, that hey, you know, I'm gonna call the pastor. And it's and, and thank God we have a pastor that wants you to call him. That wants you to let him know when, when he can help. But scripturally, he says, is any sick among you, let him call, he says, for the elders of the church. And I know Brother Rodman can attest to this and, and others as well, but there's times that Brother Allen would come. Young as well, could attest to this. 
says, I'm going to be gone for a day or two. Can you, you know, just be available for the people? Yes. Yes. So he, he can administer others to help in that area. Other leaders in the church. But it's specifically call. He says, let him call. Let they, they that are sick, let somebody know. I'm not fussing. But it's our, it's, we, have, we have something that we need to take availability of. I remember one time in particular, several years ago, I was coming in from work when they felt horrible. I was wondering if I was going to get home. I knew I was coming down with the flu or something. So I'm calling Brother Alex. I was on my way home. Thank God I was in the area I could get sick. Brother Alex told him, I said, look, I just ain't feeling good. I got something trying to attach to me, hold on to me. I said, I want you to pray. I want you to pray. And he did right there on the phone. Because his heart is about being who God's called him to be. Didn't feel immediately better, but I made it home. Done what little bit I had to do, got him something to eat, went to bed. Felt like a brand new person the next day. Ago. So I'm telling you, when we have sickness, we have instruction here. We have another prescription given here by God the Holy Spirit. And what does he say? He says, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. The oil is a part of a symbolic, um, well, let me just say it this way. You don't have to have oil, but if you got oil, use it. If you can get oil, use it. Okay? And then we'll forget one time I prayed for someone years and years and years ago when I just, just got into uh, answering the call of being a, a minister of, of whatever way God wanted to use me. And the place that God was using me in was an assistant to the pastor years and years ago. Different church. And this particular person called me and says, please come and pray for such and such, such, such need. And it was, so I, I just had to all been in work, so I'm in. And they went and got some cooking oil. I said, well, okay, we'll use it. And we just simply applied it to the area they wanted. And we prayed and believed God. And testimony came forth that God done the work. But it was kind of funny sometimes people, you got to wonder sometimes what people say. Because I didn't, I didn't necessarily see it. But if they seen it and gave glory to God, that's, a, that's, that's great. But they said that they seen look like smoke coming out of the word. After the oil was applied, I didn't see it, okay? But I, I didn't fool with none of that. I just thank God that he moved and done what his word said. Because it ain't about magnifying the elder, the person that's doing the prayer. Right. This is not about, you know, it's just simply the office that God used. And just he just wants somebody that's willing, somebody that's available. But does this particular office of the elder is not to be looked at as saying, well, I've got to have the elder pray for him. I've got to have the pastor pray for him. Because all believers are instructed to pray. All believers have the promise that God will move when we pray. Let's keep reading. He says, and the prayer of faith the prayer of faith shall save the sick. What is the prayer of faith? It's, it's not some prayer that we have to get, you know, some great place of, of I'll, I'll get there one day, maybe. No, it's just simply believing what God said. Simply having faith to trust, to believe that God says what in His Word that is true. That it's for me, it being his child, and I believe it. The prayer of faith is simply believing God. It's simply to believe God. But it says the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. If he hath committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. 
So the Lord, as Brother Robert said just a while ago, he's, he's concerned about the whole being of the individual. There may be times we want to hurry up and get out of the fire, but God says, I'm going to be with you in the fire. I'm going to do something in the fire for you, but I'm going to bring you out of it. So the whole being of the person God brings his healing to, if there's sin involved, it says that they, it will be forgiven of that person. They have to have the, the place comes of repentance. There has to be a repentant heart. And Jesus told the man in John, I think it's chapter 4, whenever the man that has been, was laying there on the porch at the pool of Siloam, and he says, what will thou have, have me do? He says, Lord, I, he says, I have no man to put me in the water when the water shook. Jesus says, rise up. Take up that bed and walk. So he, he, he just done what he told him to do. He had faith to believe that if he could get in the water, but he had nobody to help him. But he'd been, he had a, a, a palsy, I think, for 38 years. And he couldn't, he couldn't move on his own, I guess, quick enough to get there before somebody else got the miracle. But the point is, is that when we, we have that encounter with Christ, and he says, what would thou have me do? He says, you know, we just say, Lord, I, just, I believe you to, to meet my need. He says, if there's any sin, he said, they will, it will be forgiven him. Then he says, confess your faults one to another. So if we have a fault that needs to be addressed, don't let it go being unaddressed. Go to that person. Go to that, you, it, it may be an individual or it may be a group, but at times we need to confess our faults if, there, if, if we have the fault. It ain't like I'm supposed to come to Brother James. Say, you know, Brother James, I got this problem. Uh, I take a little drink on the side, leave my life up on about it. I'm confessing my fault to you. That's that's not what he's talking about. That's that's not what he's talking about. But people sometimes want to. Tell you that's what he's talking about. We're if we have something of uh, sin in our life, we're to talk to God about it. If we have something that we we just can't seem to to get a, a hold on, we're not supposed to go around and tell people all about it. We're just we're supposed to go to God with it. Give it to Him. This is talking about restoration between different individuals. This is talking about. If, if there's a need for it there. And it brings healing to the people. Because then he says, and pray ye one for another. Pray one for another. So now we have the, the believer aspect coming in that because I can go to a, a, a fellow brother in the Lord or sister in the Lord and have them pray for me, then I can expect the same result. Of the beginning of this verse, or the beginning of verse uh, 15, the prayer of faith in action, is the same result can be expected. Because in Mark chapter 16, he says, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name. He says, In my name. So the believer with having belief in Christ and what he's done for them can do it for, you, for our brother, can do it for our sisters. The same answer, it's the same answer. Whether it comes through the prayer of brothers and sisters praying one for another. So he says, pray ye one for another. Then he says, the effectual Fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, my question to you today is, do we believe it? 
Or do we believe that's just for those that may be a little higher up than us? Well, see, that's where we messed up right there. Because we're not to look at each other with the attitude of, I'm a little bit better than you, or I'm a little bit more this than you, I'm a whatever. But I'm a believer, and you're a believer. And we believe in God. We believe in His power. That wonder-working power. It still works today, church. The wonder-working power is still real. We can still believe God for, uh, for, for miracles. We, I believe we serve God in miracles. And, you know, we, our faith doesn't, you know, let me say this right. Our faith is very important. But it doesn't really, I'm going to just say it this way. It, it doesn't control God. Because he, He's sovereign. God is God. We're not. But we are to pray and believe God. And expect God to expect miracles because church, what do we have to lose? Amen. We are to pray and expect God to move. We're to pray and expect God to heal. We're to pray and expect God to, to relieve the afflictions at times. Even as we pray, as we pray ourselves, that we pray. That is, that is what the, the devil, our adversary, hates. Concerning a Christian is prayer. If he can defeat us on prayer, he can defeat us on every other part in our life. If he can get us to the place to say, oh, I'm not going to pray, or I prayed one time and it didn't happen, or I prayed about this and it just didn't work out the way I thought, what's the use of praying? That's what everybody else is saying. That's what the world says. And we look at prayer sometimes as saying, it's, it's not to be the last result. Well, or we have the attitude of, well, all we can do is pray. What do you mean that's all you can do is pray? <laughs> prayer is what we, what we, what holds us, church. Prayer is where we find the answer. I mean, prayer is when we see God's power at work. I mean, we can believe for that. It is, it's not saying that's the last thing we should try. Or, you know, I've tried everything else. That's not the way we should approach it. I like what Paul said. In everything by prayer. Yes. Yes. I, Brother Rob, every, just about everything you shared this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I had in my study notes. I, 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 but I, I just couldn't get to it. So God used Brother Rogers. <laughs> in everything in prayer and supplication. Let your request be made known unto God. I mean, praise God because He is God and we're not. Amen. And, and, and we just enjoying everything He has going on and trusting and believing in Him. And that's where I'm going to start right there, that the eventual fervent prayer of a righteous man will be much. And I'm going to say this about this. i got, I got to be quiet. The righteousness, the righteous part, as we talked a while ago, is only about His righteousness that makes us that person. It's not in our own righteousness. So that's where I'm going to stop right there. Thank y'all for your attention this morning. And God bless you. And if anybody don't have any questions or comments, we're going to enter into some worship and praise and expect God to move. Amen. Thank y'all very much.
I love you with an everlasting love, says the Lord. Behold, I say to you that no matter what you have done or where you have been, oh, I knew, but I loved you anyway. For I love you without condition, says the Lord. Behold, I say to you, I gather you unto me. I gather you unto me. With no condemnation, I reach out to you, said the Lord. And I call you unto me just as you are. Knowing you best, I love you most. I say to you today, come unto me. Cast all your care on me. For I am God. I love you enough that I went to the cross and gave myself for you. Behold, I say there is no lack in me. Come unto me and I will supply and I will work through you and in you to help you to understand the great love that I have for you, said the Lord. Amen.
Because in ourself, we're too busy. In ourself, we don't even care sometimes. But He does. And if He will fill us, if that's your heart's desire, God, fill my life and let me be subject to you and your will and what you want to do with me that I can spread the good news <laughs> that I can touch lives who are hungry who are broken who need you there's no one you're crying Lord you mold me melt me change me
this morning, Adina got up sick. Guess what? We prayed for her in Sunday school class. And she made it to church because God touched her this morning. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray. Hallelujah. God answered prayer. Did God answer some prayer for you today that enables you to come to the house of the Lord? <laughs> you know, sometimes we fight that fight to get out and come, but it's always worth it to be in the house of the Lord with God's people. And we just want to go to the Lord in prayer. Believe God, there are people that you have on your heart that I know you believe in God to minister and heal and touch. So if you're here and you have someone on your heart, if you just kind of raise your hand, let the Lord know you who you're thinking about today, and we're going to agree with you, and the Lord knows who it is, so we're going to agree with you in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege we have of being in your house today. Thank you, oh God, that you blessed us so much and touched us in so many ways. I thank you because I know you are a prayer answering God. And Lord, help us to never, ever believe any differently, but to know that we may not see how, we may not see why, but Lord, we know that you are working even when we don't know you're working. And we're believing that, oh God. And Lord, as we come to you, we lift up the needs of every person in this building, things that they're crying out to you for right now. Lord, we ask you to intervene greatly in each one of their lives in a special way. These who have come forward for prayer, Lord, you know what their situations are. And Lord, we set ourselves in agreement with them right now for the hand of God to rest upon the circumstances, whatever they may be. Lord, I pray for those who have someone sick at home or other situations, Father. We pray divine intervention in each of our homes, in each of our lives, in a special way. Lord, believing you to completely heal those that are believing you for their healing. We're believing you for deliverance for those who are believing for deliverance. Lord, we believe you, God, for the saving of those, Lord, that we're reaching out to. We're standing in agreement together this morning. And believe, oh God, that you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we're able to ask or think according to the power that worketh in us, which is your divine Holy Spirit. And we trust and believe you, oh God, this morning. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. Just give the Lord a good praise offering in the house this morning. No matter what's going on, God's working. Don't be moved by what you see or what you think. Just be trusting that God's working. You got some things you believe in God for you haven't seen yet? How many? I've been, I've been praying about some things that haven't happened yet. And I just want you to know, God just wants you to hold on. Keep on. Keep on. Keep on. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't give up in the very brink of a miracle. Amen. Amen. God is good. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you all for being here. Cut our oasis of love this morning. We appreciate you coming to the house of the Lord and being with us today. And uh, thank God. Thank God. Turn, turn there to somebody beside you and say, thank you for coming to church this morning. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. We want to give you the opportunity to give this morning. We know that you, you're uh, so faithful, those of you who are committed to bringing tithe and offerings to the Lord, and we appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts, so we want to give you that opportunity today and uh, just bring an offering to the Lord today, and I believe we've got a special song this morning by Brother David. He's going to bring us a song and bless us with singing, and while he sings today, we celebrate more by bringing those gifts to the Lord today. It's just another act of praise in the house of the Lord. Amen.
minister to keep having church until Jesus comes. Amen. And then when he comes, you talk about church. <laughs> you talk about church. It's going to be awesome. Amen. Amen. Well, the message in tongues even used a, a scripture uh, that, that I had. The scripture was in the message in tongues, in the interpretation of it, and that used as Brother Roger, we were talking about some earlier, right after, no, before Sunday school, and uh, 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 I had that jotted down already because uh, the Lord had, had led me in that direction, and so I'm going to, uh, if you'll go ahead, I think the, maybe the, Brother Kenny put all the scripture in there for you already, so if you'll go with the first one in Zephaniah, uh, Chapter 1 and verse 14. Listen to what he says. I'm going to be talking today about, I felt so strong about the coming of the Lord. And I'm going to say some things, even about some timing, that uh, maybe some of you have never heard before. Now, some of you have been around here a long time. Uh, you know how I feel on it. We're going to get into a little bit here at the end. We're going to mention it. We're going to show you scripture as to why I feel it's so exciting. Uh, to pay attention to what the Lord says in His Word. All of it's important. How many of you believe that? How many of you know that all of it's important? And, and you know, God's timing is not, is not, you know, He, he don't worry about time like we do. Let me just put it that way. But the Word of God says this, and I love it. It says, For by grace are we saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. There are a lot of churches that people think they're big shots. How many of y'all have seen some of those? They think they're big shots. They think they run everything. They think they can't get along without them. And they think, oh, the body of Christ is just so blessed to have them. And, you know, we are blessed to have people. But let me tell you something. Uh, you can't earn your way or work your way or be the biggest shot, whatever. Uh, you can't, you know, or be the biggest giver. Uh, you can't be the one in control and, and that'll merit you anything with God. Uh, how many of you understand what I'm saying? As far by grace are you saved through faith, faith not of works, works lest any man should boast. And, um, you know, when Jesus died on the cross, that's, that's why we preach it so strong around here, Jesus Christ, in verse 5. When Jesus died on the cross and spread those arms, the last words that he said, when he paid the price, everything. He said it is finished. Why do we want to add anything to that? The finished work of the cross. Amen? If you need salvation, where do you go and why? You run to the what happened upon the cross, what Jesus Christ bought and bought and paid for. If you need a healing, where do you run? When Jesus was going to the cross, the stripes were laid on his back that bought our healing. Amen. He said, by my stripes. He, Isaiah prophesied ahead of time and says, we are healed. And then Peter, after Jesus bought and paid for it, said, by whose stripes ye were healed. Looking back to the cross. Isaiah looked forward to the cross. And uh, Peter looked back to the cross and said, it's by his stripes that ye were healed. And then Jesus said, over and over, he said, I am the Lord God that healeth thee. And then he said, Psalmist David screamed it out, sung it out. Psalmist David said in the 103rd Psalm, he said, I'm the one that forgiveth all thine iniquities. Where do you have to go when you need forgiveness of sin? You got to go to the blood of Jesus Christ. You got to go back to him. You've got to confess your sin to him. If you do, he's faithful and just forgive us our sin and cleanse from all unrighteousness. Because when he was hanging on the cross and shed his blood, he said, it is finished. Uh, so, we, all of our provision is because of what Jesus did when he gave his life on the cross of Calvary. Now there's something else he did. And that's where we're getting into what we're going to start now today, talking about what we're talking about, about the soon return of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of y'all believe that could very well be the next event to take place? 
And so it's like the song said, you know, I mean, you know, like, like, well, like the song Brother David just sung, you know, if you've got trouble, you've got problems, and when stuff's going wrong, we're not run to, you better run to the rock. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ, the rock. But you know something else the Lord took care of on the cross? He fulfilled the promise. John 14 says that in my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And he said, if that wasn't true, I would have told you. But he said, if I go away. If I go away. He went away. <laughs> few days after that, but he went away. He said, if I go away, I will come again. He has not come yet, except in the power of the Holy Spirit, okay, and in his presence. But he's not come back to this earth yet, but he went away. And let me just go ahead and say, he went away now, according to the time, and I believe we're living on borrowed time now, he went away over 2,000 years or two days ago. Talking about Brother Smitty, the psalmist David, the scripture just leaped out at me, said, a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. And, and the, the psalm says elsewhere, but you know, just a day in thy courts a day in the presence of the Lord is better than a thousand. You know why he said that? Because here's what the Word of God says. A day is as a thousand years with the Lord. And a thousand years is as one day. Wow. Some of you think I'm old. I'm not old. I've seen some of you grinning there. But just because you celebrated my 75th birthday don't mean I'm old. I ain't even, man, I, I, uh, a day is as a thousand years with the Lord and a thousand years of the day. I got a long way to go, man. I'm not even a day old yet. I remember when Jerry was not even a day old and I was 23 years of age. Now, baby, how old are you? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, she's born in 68. That's all I'm going to say. I ain't going to tell you her age. That's two things you don't mess with ladies. You don't tell their age, you don't tell their weight. And, and every lady in here that I've ever known, I've sold a lot of cars, have lied. I look at their driver's license. It's got the date on there. I can figure out how old they are. It's also got their weight. <laughs> I made a mistake one time, said, you need to go get this upgrade. <laughs> Woo! She didn't like that a bit. <laughs> Walking around with a line in pocket. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know, a day with the Lord is nothing and it's like a thousand years but the psalmist said I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord to dwell in the tents of the weakness but just one day in the house of the Lord is better than a thousand elsewhere amen, amen. isn't that awesome to have that attitude in the spirit and look let me, let me ask you something Come on now, everybody be honest, and if this is not true, if you enjoyed something even a whole lot more than this, that's fine. But it had this been like right now, to be in the presence of the Lord, to be in the house of the Lord, and be with other people gathered together and feel his presence and feel the Holy Spirit. Isn't this, isn't this been one of the best times of your week so right now? Yeah. Yeah. Unless you come here Wednesday night and you felt some of the same stuff, you know, on an hour. And let me just go ahead and say something, especially to people. I told this somebody this week. I use my stupid old time chart. Everybody's got seven days a week. Everybody's got 24 hours in every day. Seven times 24 is 168. And when people say they're too busy to come to church, I just don't have time. Baloney. 
That's blown. That to me, that's a lie. Are you still loving? Oh yeah. yeah. I believe it's a lie. You're here, okay? But when people say, "I'm just a bit," I think there are circumstances. Sometimes I understand beyond people's control. And there are some of you living in some of that right now that certainly it can be affected a little bit. But if you can't give God two hours a week, and we even, a lot of us, give him one more hour on Wednesday night, well, guess what? Even at that, we still got 165 hours left in that week to do what we want to do. And how many of y'all know if we want to fish, we fish. If we want to hunt, we hunt. If we want to shop, we shop. Come on. If we want to go out and eat, go out and eat. Come on. Come on. If we want to fish, we fish. Come on. If we want to garden, we garden. Come on, man. And most people don't even look. Some people get paid for being there eight hours a day. Some people don't near work eight hours a day. So out of every 24, you got eight hours of work, eight hours of sleep, and eight hours to do what you want to with. So don't, don't come to God someday. And I'm talking to people from any old right now. Don't come to God someday and say, Lord, I just did big down here. I didn't have time to go to church. Let me tell you something. The Word of God tells us, instructs us, forsake not. Y'all, y'all are done. Forsake not the sin of yourselves, but together and as you see that they approach the sin even more. So, you know, and, and, and the church needs you, and you need the church. That's just about all. I, I can't explain all that right now. I'm not planning on it. Uh, our teachers do a great job of that. Brother Roger expounded on that real heavy one time about how important it is to come to the house of the Lord. And, and it's just something that you get here that you just don't get when you're out there watching your squirrels play in your yard or in your woods, okay? I understand. It's great. It's awesome. It's fun. It's neat. God created them. And I do feel the praise of the Lord. I get out on my front porch here about every morning and drink some coffee. And I watch kittens play and listen to birds chirp. And I see squirrels running and a few rabbits. And I see people, crazy people, running up down the road sometimes. I'm in the car. You thought I was talking about exercise. <laughs> Ain't too many people exercise up and down our road. But anyway, you know, we, 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 got, we take time to do the things we want to do, don't we? Sometimes. So, you know, I want to encourage you. you know, we need you. We love you. We're glad you're here. We want you here. I really mean it. I can't express it enough. And, and, and we miss you when you're not here. So I'm not fussing at nobody. But let, let's let's just let's just be you know let's just I don't want to know any other way to say it and let's just be honest let's let's quit saying I don't have time because we got time we got time to do what we want to do when we take a trip we take it we want to some people spend more time getting the deer blind ready now and that's it. For somebody's stuff, I know. But how many of y'all know that God's timing, He's not on the same time we are? And, and, we, and we think, well, we've heard this all our life that Jesus is coming. But one of these days, one of these days, it's going to happen. And there's reason for it. I won't have time to get into all of it, but put the a scripture back up if you'll trust me again. Okay? Here we go. The great day of the Lord is near. Everybody say it's near. It's near. It is near and hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty men shall cry there bitterly. Now there's going to be some people right now. Now look at the scriptures we're reading. I've been referring to it for the last few times. I think I read it one time. But I want to get on past this today. There's going to be some people right now that think they're so mighty and think they're so smart and think they're in control and think they're going to head up a one world government and think they're going to run the world and think that their money is going to buy them. And their money right now is buying them. Their money is buying them their way, okay? Their money is buying them. Uh, they've got an influence because of their money. And they're controlling people because of the money that they possess. But you're going to... There's going to come a day when they're going to do a bit of good. And then that day of the Lord, now that great day of the Lord that he said is near, he said it's a day of wrath and a day of trouble and a day of distress. How many of y'all, let me just stop here. You can leave it up there, though, please. Uh, how many of y'all know that we're living right now in a day of trouble and a day of distress? 
And if you if you if you get any kind of newscast at all that's telling you the truth, that's reporting facts, that's telling you some stuff that's going on, you'll understand that there's a bunch of trouble in the land. There's a bunch of trouble in this world, and and there's a bunch of distress, and then there is a bunch of wasteness. The scripture says a day of wasteness and a day of desolation and a day of darkness and a day of gloominess and a day of clouds and thick darkness. Go ahead. And a, a, and a day of the trumpet and alarm against fence cities and against high towers. Okay, now go to the next. Uh, I want you to notice and keep that word uh, in there. And, and it says, I will bring, I will bring distress over, remember the word that it said, a day of trumpet, okay? So keep that trumpet in your head there. And I will bring distress upon men, and they shall walk as blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the dung. Did you see this? I'll bring distress upon men, and they'll walk around like blind men, because they've sinned against the Lord. There's a lot of people that are sinning against the Lord in one of these days. God's going to reverse the thing on them. God's going to cause some stuff. Who calls them to walk around like blind men? Now look at this. Neither their silver or their gold. I don't care how much money they've got. I don't care how much stock they've got. They're, and that goes for us as well. But the silver and the gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. How many of y'all believe what God is saying? How many of y'all believe if God said it? That it's going to happen? I guarantee it's going to happen. He said, because his word is forever settled, heaven and earth will pass away. But he said, my word will never pass away. And he said, he will not alter or change the thing that he's spoken, whatever's come out of his mouth. And he said, their silver and gold shall not be able to deliver them. Right now, they can take silver and gold and buy anything they want to with it. They can buy power. They can buy prestige. They can buy people. They can buy government. They can buy, they can buy whatever. It won't deliver them in the, in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by fire of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy, speedy radiance of them all that dwell in the land. Oh, is that the last one for Isaiah? Okay, now go ahead to Isaiah. Now. now listen to this. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. How many of y'all know they're doing it right now? They're calling things that are good. They're calling it evil. So you should not discriminate about any kind of sexual difference. You should not discriminate about any kind of, uh, you know, there's, don't say male or female. Don't even say Mother's Day. We're supposed to start saying, so we won't offend somebody, we're supposed to start saying something that was good. That's evil now. That's what they're saying. We're supposed to say happy birthday. Happy birthday people day. <laughs> it, what gets me is some of their own religion if they're true to their own religion now remember I didn't say Christianity I just said religion if they're true to their religion they say they talk about Mary the mother of God <laughs> they must not believe they need to say happy person person in heaven, you birth Jesus. I'm, I'm trying to make this all up where it makes sense. But if you believe what they believe, you say, how many of y'all know they're calling evil good and they're calling good evil? Right. In the beginning, God created what he created? How many of y'all think if you get married and you have a whole lot more fun with a female if you're a male, then how many of you know there is a difference between male and female? Yes. If you don't, you want to raise some cattle, you just, brother, brother David knows a lot about this, brother Eddie knows a lot about it, I don't know who else knows a lot about it. How many of y'all, anybody else got some cattle? If you want to raise a herd of cattle, why don't you go, you've got a bunch of bulls and no heifers? How many of y'all know there's a difference in the gender? Oh, if you don't think gender matters, then your elevator don't go all the way to the top story. <laughs> I'm talking about your brain right now. 
And I'll get, you know, if this goes on YouTube, they'll cut me off because they don't want nobody telling you there's a difference. But it's so funny, I've got a mirror in my house before I get in the shower, and I can tell that I don't look like the person, the birthing person that births my two people. <laughs> Isn't it hard to try to talk proper? <laughs> But when I look in that mirror, I don't even know what to call her. My wife or whatever anymore. The person. My person <laughs> that I'm married to. We don't look the same when she strips off and I strip off. You want me to go any further? Is that clear? No. <laughs> let, let me tell you something. And they call it, you know, they call it, they're calling good evil. At your life, for instance. Now, this is going on in the land, Dan. I've told you before. So, they say, I don't even tell me no more. Well, there's somebody here that ain't heard it. So, I'm telling you, you don't listen right now. Just don't listen. That's what some of you do anyway. Don't listen sometimes. But most of you do. So I appreciate you. I thank God for it. But let me tell you something. You see that flag right up there, the one with the stars and the, and the blue and the red and, and white down there? I love that flag. Amen. That flag does not offend you. Let me ask you something. If that flag offends you, would you please stand to your feet? Yeah. I see nobody standing, or else there's some chickens. <laughs> Probably. This is where there'd be something. It ends me. Well, see, they're calling that evil now. But I'll tell you something. That is symbolic of something that's good and something that's great. And a land that I love and a land that I stood up was willing to die for even and fall for in the military. I want you to know that is good. That's not evil. That's not bad. And I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Just to make people say, well, this is good, so we're going to put an LGD flag up in here. No, we're not. Amen. And I know somebody said, well, you wouldn't have to say all that. I just want to be very clear. Yeah. There's such a thing as calling good evil and calling evil good, and I am sick and tired of people doing that, that we have to put up with and listen and get exalted and lifted up above everybody else. How about you? Yeah. I'm telling you what, and I know some of you don't want to participate right now. Well, I'm sorry, but the Word of God prophesied and said that in the last days it'd be that way. Yep. And they put darkness for light, and they put light for darkness. And they put bitter for sweet, and they put sweet for bitter. Right. You know, there's some bitter stuff going on, and they say, that's sweet. They say, that's how it ought to be. That's how it ought to go. That is just fulfilling the Word of God. And I promise you, God's going to have the last say. He's going to do something about it. Amen. He's going to do something about it. It's not me going to do it. It's not me going to rally anybody to come on and have a big old protest. I want you to know, you know, we can protest stuff without being involved in a big old group and, and, and all. And if you did protest something, you protest. The best way you can do it is at the booth when you vote, okay? Uh, you can change that. But one big thing that I've been emphasizing a whole lot is pray. Amen. Pray. Repent yourself and pray. You know, if my people have called by the name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then we can hear from heaven and God will heal our land. Amen. He'll forgive, he said. How many of you know there's things we need to repent over sometime in our lives? Come on. And if we, God's people will humble themselves and pray and turn and repent, let me tell you something. God is able to change some things. But there's coming a day when he will change it. He'll change it. Whether they want it changed or not, even whether the church wants it changed, it's going to happen whenever the day of the Lord comes. And, and, and the Word said that His day is near. Now, go ahead uh, to the next one. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Go ahead to the next one. And there's a bunch of people that think they're smarter than everybody else. That's a... Uh, in different pieces of, of position. This is this. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drinks. It seems like sometimes every time somebody gets together, that's 
That's what they do. But let me, how many of y'all understand? When God said, whoa, he, he wasn't saying slow. He said, whoa. And when God says, whoa, then that's serious. If I tell a horse, whoa, and I'm on, of course, I'm pulling back on the reins, I expect him to obey me. How about you? And we're far more than horses. And when God said, whoa, it was always bad. He said, woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, woe unto you lawyers. It was a serious thing. So, and, and, and he said, woe unto these people which justify the wicked for reward and taketh away the righteousness of the righteous, righteous from him. And I mean, you can see stuff going on, go ahead. And this is in Isaiah now. It says, Therefore as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff, so shall their root be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they had cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, now listen to this, and have despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Let me tell you something. You don't mess with God. You, you know, one of these days, God's, God's going to step in. God's going to have less second. And let me tell you something, it can happen any time. How many of y'all are kind of excited you a little bit? Amen. Isn't it amazing we serve a mighty God that can do anything? And another thing, the word God does say, you know, I've said it, I preached it here a few weeks ago. God's angry at the wicked every day. He's angry at the wicked every day. And I've always felt like, you don't know, get God hacked off. You know, you might make amends with mom and daddy or whatever, but let's not get God hacked off. Okay? And I don't want, how many of y'all don't want to stand good graces with him, good standing with him? You, know, you don't want him to be mad, aggravated, and cute. You know. So, I think we need to pay attention to what he says. Okay, next verse. And, and, and what's this now? This says that Hebrews is talking, and it, it's going to be leading up to the coming of the Lord, what's, what's taking place right now. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense, recompense or reward. How many of y'all know you can cast your confidence away? God's told us not to lose confidence and don't throw it away because if we hang on to the confidence that we have in the Lord coming, then it said it had great recompense or reward. It's going to be a reward. Amen? Because he's coming. And he'll put a stop to this. Go ahead. Now, I think some things can change before, but who knows when he's coming. Now, listen it? For you have need of patience. How, how many of y'all can say, I need that verse? Amen. We have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Again, I mentioned in John 14, he promised that if he went away, he'd come again. And, 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 and we're wondering, well, why ain't the Lord come? And in the scripture, we'll go and say, go ahead. We have need of patience. For yet a little while, say, so we've been waiting a little while. How many of y'all have been waiting a little while? I've been waiting a little while for, after I got saved, for 65 years. And I honestly believe, when I got saved, when I was 10 years old, that I, I was afraid that the Lord was going to come before Brother Dineheim, the preacher in Arizona, could get through preaching so I could run to that altar and give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ at 10 years old because the Holy Spirit had convicted me of sin, convicted me that I was not living right. And I'm just going to ask a question. How many of y'all know that you know that you know the Holy Spirit lets you know when you're not doing something right? Come on. Come on. Come on. You know. Again, and I use this because it's so simple. Have you ever told a lie before? Okay, yeah. Everybody has to raise their hand. Well, before you told a lie, the Holy Spirit was whispering in your ear, in your heart, or in your head, telling you to tell the truth and don't tell a lie. The Holy Spirit. And so you know when you're doing stuff that you shouldn't do. And if we'll start yielding to that, you know, and saying, Lord, help me with it. I promise you, things can be a whole lot different for you in the future. But he says, for get a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. See, he's waiting a little while right now, but we have neither patience. We've got to wait on him and not get over anxious. We'll go ahead with the next one. Now, the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, 
Uh, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. I don't want to draw back. How about you go ahead? But we are not of those that draw back under perdition, but of them that lead to the saving of the soul. You know, we, we're, we're, it's not, you know, God, even in tradition, when he talked about uh, Judas, and I really don't have time to get into this, you know, it, it wasn't because he had to do it. He could have, if he had repented himself and said, God, forgive me, and run to the cross and throw the money down instead of bringing it back to the Sanhedrin and throwing it down and said, hey, I, I, I don't want no part of it after you'd already betrayed the Lord. And if he'd have run to the cross and repented, how many of y'all believe the Lord would have, he could have found grace? Now, the only thing is, God in his foreknowledge knew what he was going to do. So it called him the son of perdition. And which does not uh, mean the same as some people try to teach on we're predestined. We're predestined to go. You're either going to go or go. God in his foreknowledge knows who's going to make it and who's not. He really does. But he's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. If people would repent, then they can be saved. How many of you believe that you can get in the good graces of God if you'll just obey and serve him? Come on now. You know, and maybe some stuff is going to happen. When you were in disobedience, maybe some stuff happened when you were in disobedience. But if you'll surrender to the Lord and start obeying Him, then you can get the blessings of the Lord. And God knows. God knows. You know. He, he knew ahead of time just how big to build heaven. Come on, but guess what about hell? The Bible says hell enlarges itself its borders without measure. Uh, it just keeps on enlarging itself because more people are going there all the time. And they're going there, though, as a transgressor because of the cross. If we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we can be saved. No matter what you've done, if the message went out, that God loves you just like he already loves you better than, than you even love yourself or no. Anybody else that loves you, God loves you so much that uh, it, it's, you had gone too far, you had been too bad. You know, God will have mercy on you and give you grace. Now go ahead on the next one. I want to read these scriptures real quick. But we are not, okay, going to the next one, but to the saving of the soul. He wants to be saved. And then he said, I already quoted this. I tell you what, skip John, because he told that about him, my father's house, so many men said, what's true, what told you. And I'll listen to this. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. How many of y'all know sometimes we don't want to humble ourselves? We want to go bullheaded, stubborn, know it all, I can handle this. Come on. Uh, humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And if we will, he said that he may exalt you in due time. Go ahead and ask. Listen to this. Anybody got anything to care? Come on, anything trouble, anything bother you, anything weighs you down. See, are you anxious over anything? And see, that's what it's saying. Casting all, everybody say all. all. Casting all your care, and that word care there means anxiety, fret, worry, all that stuff. And isn't it amazing how we carry it around so much sometimes? Come on. Isn't it amazing how we dwell on it? Isn't it amazing how we think about it? Isn't it amazing why we don't? You know, the old song that the old timers used to sing in the church, and especially when I was a kid, we didn't sing a lot here, bring your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. And how many times, and if you'll trust and never doubt, he'll surely bring me out. Just bring your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. How many times have we come to an altar of prayer somewhere? It don't have to be like this. It could be home. It could be driving down the road in the car. But we pray about something real strong and real serious. And we, we say, okay, God, please help me with this. We bring our care to the Lord, okay? And we bring it to him. But then when we leave, we're, we got it with us. It's almost like we come to the altar and pray and bring to the Lord and pray about it, feel relieved, and then take off the whoops, I forgot, I left my burden up here. I'm going to go get my burden and I'm going to carry it around. The next thing you know, that the stuff we've been fretting over, care, anxiety, worry, fret, all this stuff, we, we, the next thing you know, we're dwelling on it again instead of saying, okay, God, I brought this to you and I'm leaving it with you. You know why we can cast all of our care upon him? Because he cares for us. I mean, that's what the Word says. He cares for us. He can carry your heavy load. He can carry your burden. He can carry your anxiousness if you just give it to Him. Bring it to Him and leave it. Go ahead now. And He said, be sober, be vigilant, 
because your adversary the devil, and if you don't believe it, that you've got an adversary, will believe the word of God. Because he said, your adversary, he's your adversary, he's my adversary, the devil. He's going out as a Lord of mine, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Now I will tell you, a lot of people say, well, he don't, he don't have any teeth no more because he's pulling on coward. Let me tell you something, he's looking to see who he may devour. He can devour people if we don't cast our care upon him and, and, and say, God, I need your help. And, and I, I believe you meant what you said, and you said I could do that. Now, Lord, help me to be sold and be vigilant and, and, and depend on you to, to take care of me and help me. Go ahead and that. Whom we, we resist steadfast in the faith. That's the only way you can fight is steadfast in the faith. That's why Paul said fight the good fight of faith. Uh, how many of you all know it's a fight? We have to keep believing because the devil will try to come in and make you doubt. The devil will try to come in and tell you because he's trying to devour you. He wants to devour your faith. He wants to devour you holding on. He wants to, he wants to make you throw your confidence away. But he says you resist him in the faith knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. How many of y'all know you're not the only ones, I'm not the only ones that's suffering or that's going through some of the trouble and some of the stress and some of the stuff that's in this land. Come on, we, we, got, we got other people, the same people, mankind out there that are in the world are, are facing the same things that we are in the church. Go ahead. Now watch this because we're going to get on down here. But the God of grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. Now listen to this. After that you have suffered a while. Anybody done any suffering here lately? After you've suffered a while, make you perfect and then establish you and strengthen you and settle you. But I like how that first part says, but the God of all grace, isn't it awesome the grace of God that can come to us and bless us, the mercy of God that can, can just bless us and take care of us? Go ahead. A day of the trumpet and alarm is what Zephaniah said. A day of the trumpet and alarm will sound, even against thin cities and against high power. Now, go into the next, because I want to get into this as I close with it. Uh, I, I thought of some of these folks that are, that want to, can I go ahead and meddle again? I don't mean this political, but they don't want the wall to keep bad folks from coming in out. They want that wall torn down, but they live behind walls. They live behind fences. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that something? They believe in fences in, but one of these days God's going to tear their fences down. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it said. Anyway, some of y'all probably didn't. I don't see that. Well, it'll happen. Because so God said it's going to happen. And listen to this. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brother. And this just means unlearned. It don't mean you're dumb, stupid. And of course, some people are, but y'all are not. There's some people in the world that are. I would not have you to be ignorant or unlearned, brother, concerning them which are asleep that you saw or not. See, that's why children of God, when we lose a loved one, we might sorrow and feel sorry for ourselves. We're going to miss them, and we have a little hurt there, and we have some grief, and that's okay. And some of that's good for you, and it's good to do that. But I'm just saying, we don't have the same, we don't sorrow and all those which have no hope. You know why? I'm going to go ahead and read the Listen to this. It's getting exciting now. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, how many of you all believe that? Amen. You believe Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Listen to this. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, we which are alive and remain to the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Bump somebody right now and touch them say, you lie. As the Lord come yet, for we which are alive and man will not prevent them which are asleep. Go ahead. And there's this, I think it, somewhere in here, it talks about President Trump. For the Lord himself shall, <laughs> for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and the voice of the archangel, and with, there it is, with the trump of God, I'm just cutting up. How many of y'all know there's going to be a trumpet sound? Remember we read over in Zephaniah, there's going to be, a, when the trumpet, the day of the wrath, the trumpet's going to sound, there's going to be a trumpet sound. Well, the trump of God's going to sound, but listen to it, 
and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we go ahead, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And then he said, Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Amen. It's going to happen. Go ahead and stand up if you will. I started to say stand on your feet, but one guy did that and he realized the guy didn't have no feet. So he felt bad. Everybody stand, stand. You know, the Word of God says that one of these days it's going to happen. And, and I didn't have time. I want maybe next Sunday I'll talk to you about, show you the time and on the day as it's found in the Lord. I would have like shown you what's happening. I would have liked to show you what the Word of God says about it. And it's clear. Because Jesus even told old Harry the Fox one time. He said, you just go tell him today and tomorrow. He talked about two days, what he's going to be doing. Then he talked about what's going to happen on Thursday. So we'll, we'll reveal that later. And we're living, I believe, with all my heart at the brink of the third day. I believe that third day we're going to be able to decide him. But, but let me tell you something. If that bothers you just a little bit, if it concerns you, well, I'm not. You know, it, the Bible says comfort one another with these words. So what I'm going to do right now, if anybody's in the house right now, and you want to, you just feel, you want to make your calling and your election sure. Please, please know, I'm not going to ask you to join this church. I'm not going to ask you to give a time. I'm not going to ask you to repeat after me. I'm just going to say, if you want to thank you to, for coming to the piano, I want you to know that the Lord will take you just like you are. We're not asking you to join this church or any, anything like that. Not even going to ask you to. If you want to join, you can do that later on. But let me just tell you something. You want to make your call and your election sure. I, by television, I can't see you. But I want you to know the coming of the Lord is nigh at the doors. Nobody knows the day nor the hour. And if you're going to get in and be ready, you better get in and get ready now and stay ready and don't cast your confidence away. Because it's got great reward. The Word of God says it's got great reward. And one of these days, We've got trouble and problems now. You think we've got trouble politically and all kind of other ways? You think we've got trouble? There's really going to be some trouble one of these days. But one trouble you don't want to be in, you don't want to be one of those ones left behind. When that trump sounds, the dead folks that are ready to go, getting up first is what God said. And then we was alive and remain. We're going to be called up. We're going to be with the Lord from then on. And he said, comfort one of his words. If that don't bring comfort to you, you can buy it. I don't want to say television, but the way of this video, wherever, or however you're watching it, on what device you're watching, whether it be a TV or an iPad or whatever, computer, phone, then you can pray about where you're at and call on the Lord. But you live here in this building, if you want to just come forward around these all, you can stand, set, or deal, it won't make no difference to us. And I'll, I'll just come visit with you in just a minute. If you just want to say, God, I want to be ready.
say this and shut up, that your willpower will get the job done. Every one of us in this building who said, I'm not going to do this no more. Well, I'm going to stop. And your own, your own flesh, you can't do it. But I can't even go on a good diet and stick with it. Some people can. But mo most people, the willpower will get the job done. I will tell you something. We go to him and admit it, his power can get the job done. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, you can get to work in your heart, your life, your soul. If you'll say, God, I can't handle this, well, please help me with it. Or, God, I hate this, I don't like to do it, but help me, God. You can give him authority then to come in through the power of the Holy Spirit and get his grace working in you and helping you in the areas you need help in. All right, one more time. Anybody want to come, you come right now. We're not going to beg you. Nobody's on. Okay? And look, let me just say this. If you need to go, then God bless you. You can go. Anybody that comes or wants to come even after this, can stay just as long as you want to stay in the presence of the Lord. It don't take a long time. Again, remember, he said, if any person will hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in. That's what he said. He said, we can talk to him. You talk to him just like we talk to him. He'll listen and he'll talk to you. Thank you for these that have come. These that have come. And if you need to leave, God bless you. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord today. We just hope and pray you can come back and bring folks with you. Because we have seen people get in before it's too late. Not just in our church, but get in the kingdom. Our church can't save nobody but Jesus Christ or the ball of in Christ for our salvation. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of the service today. I've been here as well.